How are you? Welcome to the Max Bang. My name is Max, and I like to drink coffee. Max Bang is a half-hour hangout. So grab a cup of coffee, and uh, how's your mother? The idea with these is to take five minutes. Hold on, let me grab my coffee. We do a smooth jazz radio voice and uh, take 30 minutes to chill out and maybe hopefully build a community. How much did you like me just writing in that book right there like a creep? <laughs> I felt like I was in fucking mist. For those of you who don't know what mist is, mist was a computer game. Computer game. It's like a fucking DOS game. Way, way back in the day, there were these old, I don't know, like Compaq, C-O-M-P-A-Q computers and, you know, just fucking, it wasn't all uh, MacBook Pros, let me tell you that. Anyway, there was a, <laughs> the early generation of computer games, there was one a game called Myst, and it absolutely captivated the world. You walked around, it was like one of the first big computer games ever. I was a little too young to play. It's a little tricky. You walk around, you solve puzzles. You you show up on this island and you just walk around and solve puzzles. And eventually, uh, there's nobody else there. There's no people. It's very fucking annoying. Uh, except for there are these two guys and then spoilers, three guys who are stuck in books. You go to this library and you open a book and there's a picture, and it turns out that these two brothers, and they're both stuck in different books, and you have to go around and solve puzzles and collect pages of the books, put them back in. So the guy's stuck in a book, and a bunch of pages were ripped out, and every time you put in a page, you're able to communicate with him more easily in the dimension that he's in, or whatever, the book dimension, whatever. It's ridiculous. Anyway, long story long, both of the guys are brothers, and they're trapped in this these separate books and it turns out spoilers i don't know if it's spoilers if i'm spoiling a 30 year old computer game <laughs> but spoiler you have to sort of choose which brother to, to free and they're both scumbaggy in their own way and they both tell you the other one's evil and not to believe them and the spoiler is they're brothers and they were both imprisoned there by their father and you have to go to the f a third book a secret book and give him his page, and then he comes back, fucking destroys both the books, which I don't really, even as a little kid, I was like, does that mean he killed his sons? It's fucked up. And then you release him. But but anyway, you finally find him in this other dimension, and he's just sitting there with like this huge book, like, you know, 50 pounds, 50 times bigger than this with a quill and he's writing his life's work i must i must complete my life's work it is imperative you release me from this book and he's scribbling some shit and you're like okay uh <laughs> i don't know it was a good game i remember what was annoying about the game was um it turns out you, you start on this one island and you have to go to all these other mythical my, mystical islands mist and you could have completed the game without ever leaving the first island. Sort of like a big sp twist, like a surprise ending. Now, even as a little kid, I was like, well, that's fucking bull. I didn't. <laughs> well, that's that's a that's ridiculous. Like, I didn't want to. You know, I didn't even have to leave. I didn't have to go anywhere. That's, you know, whatever game. So I thought Mist was anyway, Mist. What is this book? This is a book that I've been working on for about a year. It's called The Full Focus Planner by Michael Hyatt. It's supposed to help you be more productive and keep track of your progress. <laughs> Does it work? No. Is it pretty? Yes. Does it have excellent quotes at the top of every page? Yes. And that's where I want to start today. This quote is from Anonymous. When there is a hill to climb, don't think waiting will make it any smaller. And God damn, that isn't just fucking profound and also a little frustrating. You know, and that, that to me is the funny thing about philosophical pro profound inspirational quotes is that sometimes I'm like, yeah, well, obviously, dude. And sometimes I'm like, ah, damn, I should have thought of that. Or like, yeah, I know you didn't, I shouldn't have been running away from that truth, but here we are. That's how productive I am. Uh, 
Today we are drinking uh, French press coffee, actually, in my self-heating mug. One of my favorite things I've ever gotten. Brittany got it for me for my birthday last year. Brittany's birthday is next week. What did I get for her? I have no friggin' idea what I got for her. I didn't. I have no idea what to get her. I got her something kind of an experience that's kind of expensive. I, you know, I don't want to put it in terms of like I spent this much money, so I'm happy now. But I, I don't know. I think she'll really like it. It's it's a cool experience. But I didn't get her anything specific. She killed it last year. She got me these pants that I wear all the time for my birthday. She and she got me this ember mug. And I'm fresh out of ideas. Very frustrating. So if you can think of anything for Brittany for her birthday, please let me know in the comments below. Quick shout out to anyone eating right now. Hope you're having a delicious meal. And also quick shout out to the trash truck that's driving by my window. <laughs> and also quick shout out to anyone who's eating alone. Quick shout out to anyone who's driving to or from work. Quick shout out to anyone who's folding laundry. Um... <laughs> I mean, it's not really applicable now, but I do remember when I used to get on the treadmill. You believe that? I used to get on the treadmill and the elliptical and the stationary bike. Now, why did I get on those things? I, I, I almost never got on them for pure exercise. I would use them for, uh, in college, we, had to, we would have wrestling practice. And practice is pretty, that's a pretty good workout, you know, to the point of like, your shirt is completely drenched in sweat, almost to the point of it's uh, embarrassing. In fact, I would say it's embarrassing how sweaty you get. Again, that depends on how much water is in your system, and we would monitor that very closely. So uh, I've referred to cutting weight. Hopefully you're familiar with the concept by now, but if you're not, cutting weight is you lose a lot of water weight very quickly so that you can weigh a certain amount, weigh in, and then you get the rassle. So what we would do is we would have a full practice and then you would go and just put on a sweatshirt, your rubber suit. Uh, you'd tape your the cuffs of your sweatshirt so that no heat could escape, no liquid could escape. You'd put a hood on, tie the things, pull the two drawstrings real tight so you're only like, you look like a scuba diver basically. And then we would just get on an elliptical. You'd break a sweat and then you'd get on an elliptical or a bike or whatever treadmill and you wouldn't really be going that hard you wouldn't be going wicked hard but you'd be going fast enough to continue your sweat and you just stay there for an extra hour after practice you can squeeze out between three and five pounds bingo bango it was phenomenal is it fun no did i want to kill myself yes would i do it again no it was a fucking nightmare. <laughs> and as much as I do love wrestling, and I think it's one of the best sports, and I think it's one of the best experiences anyone should have, anyone can have, and everyone should have, cutting weight, in my opinion, I've said this before, is like one of the worst parts of it. Fitness tip for you off of that. If you break a sweat, keep it's way, way, way easier to keep a sweat going than to stop and restart your sweat. Once you start sweating, milk that as you know, ring that, ring yourself out as much as you can because stopping and starting a new sweat is a nightmare. So if you're, if you're exercising, keep that in mind. Uh, why is wrestling such a great sport? I guess it's sort of more, it's the best combat sport there is. I, as much as I like boxing, I don't love boxing. I think the goal of boxing is to give, give somebody a concussion. I think that's pretty fucking dumb. Uh, but combat sports, jujitsu, or even karate, you know, at the end, it, it's nice to physically know how to do stuff. It's nice to know how to have balance and strength and explosion and stuff like that. To me, the biggest thing was it made me way more confident and way less um, uh, combative, I guess. Like I going into practice, you, you know, you think it trains people to like want to beat people up. But what it trains people to know is that there's always someone who can beat you up. So maybe you should watch your mouth and not be an asshole. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's a, it's a half joke, but I'm dead serious. I mean, I think the people who wrestlers that I know, jujitsu, martial artists that I know, they're way more well adjusted. They're the ones way, way less looking for a street fight. They're way less sort of conflict or combative or whatever because they know the principle that someone can kick the shit out of them the people that i know that are very sort of 
over aggressive and like get in your face like what bro you want to go you want to go like those people don't go or they don't know what going is going is getting into a fight getting punched in the face and getting punched in the face fucking sucks you know what i mean no matter how tough you think you are if you don't know that someone's way tougher you end up just it's crap it's not worth it so knowing that someone can beat you up makes you more polite (laughs) and it and it sort of makes you more um you look at others you want to protect other people because you know what it was like to be them it's just it's just the best sport there is and i highly recommend even i mean now you can't really covid wrestle (laughs) and you can't really adult wrestle kind of a pain in the ass but if you can sign your kid up for it i highly recommend it before we go any further i did want to touch on the piece of knowledge When there's a hill to climb, don't think waiting will make it smaller. I mean, if that's not the most true thing I've ever heard in my life, waiting will not make it any easier. Waiting will actually only make it easier to never start and thus completely forget the project. So if you're waiting on something, I highly recommend going for it. I did want to talk today about um, I'm listening, sort of a combination thing. One, I was talking to my dad. I was talking to my father. Spoilers, I talked to my dad quite a bit. Mainly because he works like really funny hours. Um, So he'll be driving home and he's in Massachusetts. So he'll be driving home from work at like midnight, 1 a.m. his time. And so I think he sort of gets bored on his drive home and calls and like doesn't know who to call. And frankly, I'm the only one up. (laughs) You know what I mean? I don't think a lot of his buddies are hanging out, hanging out, chilling around 1 a.m., 2 a.m., their time. Plus, it's only 10 p.m. my time. You know what I mean? I don't, it doesn't bother me at all. In fact, I absolutely love it. I appreciate it. And that's what I'm very lucky that he decides to do that, but it's nice to chat with him. Anyway, so we were talking the other night and he was like, yeah, work's tough. And guess what? Uh, when I get home, I got to catch the bat that's flying around my room. <laughs> Now, okay, so that's growing up in in the house. He still lives in the house that I grew up in, uh, his house, obviously. Having a bat in your bedroom is not exactly a weird thing for that house. Let me explain. I, You know, they have a fireplace and thus they have a chimney. I think the bats fly in the chimney. They get stuck in a bedroom. Then they freak out. They don't know what to do. Uh, Growing up, we would have to catch bats, like, not all the time, but, you know, once every couple of months, I'd say. And, uh, yeah, it's pretty scary catching a bat, <laughs> especially when you're a little kid. You know, you don't notice they're there, and then suddenly you hear this, like, flap, 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 flap. and you see this dark thing, like, curling, you know, doing loops around your ceiling, and you're like, what the f- the fuck is that oh is that a ghost oh no 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 it's scarier than a ghost it's because it's real it's a bat and then i remember i mean i don't know if this is true or an old wives tale a maid's tale or whatever but bats like to play in your hair so the longer hair you get they would like and then dig in your hair like that one that's terrifying because my hair is wicked long right now two that's so scary because i don't know if it's real or not and thank god i never found out because no no bats ever flew in my head but Part of the reason they never found out, I never found out, is that I would throw a ski hat on immediately. A a wool hat, winter hat. So what do we do when you get a bat? Um, Once you see a bat, you run out of the room, you close the door so he can't get out. Then you call your mom or your dad or your brother, your sister, and you're like, hey, uh, can you help me catch this bat? And they're like, no, fuck off. Anyway, they usually help. So what you do is you put your ski hat on, you put your gloves on, winter coat, winter gloves Um, what I used to use was a tennis racket to try to like sort of stop it. You know, I, I whacked one of them once and I just felt so terrible. It was like, you know, I had nightmares about it for years. I I probably still do. So I didn't like to whack them with the tennis racket, but I found that you could sort of like, if it's flying, you could sort of like catch it and like sort of just guide it to the ground and then you could trap it under the tennis racket. You have to be very careful because they are way as big as they feel when they're flying. They're, you don't want to hurt them, you know? Uh, but then once you trap it, we would get a big Tupperware, put the Tupperware on it. And then we would take a hardcover, big book or like a record album record or thing or something flat. 
and long. Sort of slide it under the Tupperware and then we'd take it and just throw it outside. Eventually, my dad got a uh, a net, which I think was like a butterfly net. Or maybe, no, 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 it was a, um, he just told me actually. I think originally he had a a net for catching butterflies. Now he has a net for catching crabs, which feels way more New England. (laughs) Hey, how are you? Just going crabbing, brother. Oh, really? There's some good lobsters. Oh, they're delish, I'm I'm sure. Anyway, take it easy. So he has a net now, and he catches it. <laughs> so anyway, you catch it with the net. You trap it under a Tupperware. You put the book under it. You take it outside. You let it fly away. Tell him, to, tell him to fuck off. Tell him to tell his friends to fuck off. Spoilers, they'll be back. One of them will be back in two or three months. Now, the reason I bring it up is I just thought it was really funny. I sort of came to the realization that that's not everybody, you know? Like, I'm sure there's people in... Um, I don't know, Texas, who are like bats. So we don't have bats. We have huge snakes and scorpions and shit, but we don't have bats. You know, and there's people in California that are like, we don't have bats, but we have earthquakes, but whatever. And it made me really think about the things that I thought were normal growing up were in fact very specific to me. And I don't, I'm not saying like I had this like idyllic or nightmarish childhood i'm saying like there were certain things that are very specific to me that happened to me growing up that i took for face on face value as like completely normal i'm reading this book um about this guy named chris duffin we interviewed him for the fitness podcast and he wrote this book and he was like pseudo homeless growing up his parents were sort of drifters they grew weed on farms and sort of just moved around from place to place. And his, he's telling these fucking incredible stories about him growing up in on like a weed farm with like no supervision and blah, blah, blah. And the thing that he's mentioning was, yeah, I didn't think it was weird. I just thought it was normal because that was my, that's how I grew up. So it really got me thinking about what may, what is norm, you know, normalizing things. And especially as a little kid thinking like, that's not weird. That's just how I grew up. So my question to you is, what was something from your childhood that you thought was totally normal? But looking back on it, you were like, huh, that was weird. I can't believe we did that. I would be very interested. I, I, you know what I mean? That would be very fun for me to, to sift through those. Because, again, uh, you know, I, I thought everybody grew up growing up had the same exact thing I did, you know? You shovel snow in the winter, you know, you walk to the ice cream store in the summer. Uh, You know what I mean? Like you go to, you go to the beach or like there's, there's ocean right next to you. You know what I mean? People in Oklahoma, they never seen the ocean. People in Michigan, they go to the lakes. You know what I mean? And it would be interesting. And also interesting to think not everyone had the same exact childhood that you did. Maybe you should put yourself in someone else's shoes. What's going on with the news? Uh, The post office appears to be under attack. Uh, I don't, (laughs) and this is one of the worst things I do is I wake up and I read the news and it puts me in a bad mood for the rest of the goddamn day because guess what? Everything is going terrible right now. The post office is under attack. The new postmaster general, Luis DeJoy, Louis DeJoy, I don't know what the hell his name is. I don't know who this guy is. He was put in charge, and it looks like his only goal was to fuck up the post office. Why? Great question. Who knows? I can't speak for him. I know that he has about 30 plus million dollars in stock in companies that are direct competitors to the post office. So he's in charge of the post office, and he would make more money if the post office failed. Uh, I know that he got rid of a bunch of mail sorting machines and sort of fired a bunch of people and they're taking away mailboxes. If I were to guess, it's because they don't want people voting by mail. I don't know how on whatever political spectrum you are, how you can defend the idea that, uh, you hate allowing people to vote. Voting by mail has always been a pretty safe way to vote. As far as I can tell, statistically, that's pretty fucking clear because they don't just, it's not about who can send in a ballot. They don't, they, they check the ballots. They make sure which one's which. 
you know, I also, I don't like write it on a paper towel and just mail it in. And then suddenly that's my vote. It's like, there's a pretty official way of doing it. So voting by mail has seemingly been a, a viable way of voting. And now obviously with COVID-19, everyone, a shit ton of people are going to want to vote by mail because they don't want to go into a place where they're possibly exposed to COVID-19. It seems like the mail, the U S postal service is under attack from the top down and they don't want people to vote by mail. Pretty frustrating. I don't know. It's, it's, it's hard. I, I don't know how you can defend someone attacking, uh, uh, a citizen's ability to vote by mail. So frustrating. Register to vote, vote early, call your Senator, call your Congressman, whatever. Tell them you want to be able to vote. You want to be able to vote by mail. You want to make sure that this upcoming election, just like every other election should be, should function properly. So frustrating. Uh, so that's been your daily depressing news on the max bag. Fantastic. <laughs> I remember eating alone. I remember eating at my desk a lot. It's so funny. I, you know, I feel like I've lived so many different lives in my short <laughs> time on this earth. Uh, I, I look back on those times in my life and it's, it's always been very, um, Everything's sort of been fine. I, I, I've been able to adapt very well. I think that's just sort of my nature. Uh, but I remember, you know, I had this office job, a cubicle job. Wore, wore shirt and tie and had a, my own cubicle. I had like that like inbox and outbox. Um, you know, we did like a March Madness office pool, which I won. Uh, <laughs> birthdays in the conference room. You know, and I was like 19 when that happened. You know, I had my own place. Uh, I, and that was a string of my life when that was, that was everything. And so and anyway, looking back on it, I remember eating alone, finding a video, putting it on the screen, eating alone, um, in my cube. It's funny. I guess what's funny to me, and I know I've said this before, but it's always, it's always sort of interesting. It's funny how much your day to day life never changes. But then after a while, everything sort of changes, you know, my day to day didn't change that much from one office from my office job days. But then suddenly, you know, one day is a little different from the next day. Very, very little. And then now I'm making YouTube videos like where did that come from? You know, anyway, so shout out to anyone. I know we don't have cubicles anymore, but shout out to anyone looking at their laptop, eating alone and actually what was really weird about that job was not only did I have that cubicle job, which is sort of isolating as it is, but I would also have, um, jobs on, we did a lot of construction projects. And so I would have a, I'd have to go to the project and sort of stay there all day. So I would get out of the office, which was great, but I'd go to another building and just have like a random table in the middle of a gigantic, like cavernous room. And it was just me on like a folding table with my laptop. just like, you know? And so as much, as much as being in a, in a cubicle isolates you, imagine being free of your cubicle on a desk, but in, in a, like a room, middle, the size of a, you know, gymnasium. And there's like a pile of two by fours over here. And there's like 50, um, uh, uh, bathroom cabinets over here. And, it was just bonkers. I remember, do you remember some like weird alone time? <laughs> not, like, not like that, you fucking creep, but like, you know, spending time alone there would, was a little weird, but that was my day. And so if, I guess what I'm saying is don't be afraid of change because you, you think everything's going to be one way for your whole life. And then before you know it, it's a completely new thing, but that's how it is. That's life. Oh, and this is a question. I wanted to end on this. Hopefully you're having a great time. Also hit the thumbs up button. Thank you guys so much for t uh, telling me how you watch this. And if you are subscribed to the channel and if you are, uh, have notifications on, frankly, I don't really care if you have notifications on or off. I just want you to be able to see the video when I put it up because I, you know, as much as you guys think, oh, it's in my subscription box. It's not my videos everyone's videos don't always show up in subscription boxes and that's YouTube's thing. I just want to make sure that if you guys are, are wanting to watch these, they're available for you. And, um, 
I was asking about how you consume them because it always it's always nice to know on my end if I can make it any better. For example, uh, I loved when I would sit down at my desk and there was a new 30-minute unedited video that I could just press play and stuff my face to. <laughs> so I really want to make sure that these are there available for you during your weekly ritual of doing these things. For example, folding the laundry. Also, if you do laundry every week, then, all right, dude, quit showing off. Lastly, what I want to uh, talk about is I get this question a lot, uh, both from people I know and from people I don't. Would we be friends if we met today? It's an important question because people change a lot. And I think if you don't change from when you were if you think you don't change from when you were in, you know, high school or college or whatever, you're way wrong. People change. That's how it goes. You know, and you get to decide who you turn into. That's great. I mean, that's that's one of the best parts of life. As you grow with someone, sometimes you inform how that person changes and that person changes with you and you sort of grow closer. Sometimes you grow apart, even if you're in a close relationship. Father, son, boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever. Friends, best friend, best friend. Also, like a lot of good movies are about that. The Town was a really, really good example, not to get too Boston on you, but Affleck and Jeremy Renner, that was a great example of two like best friends, and then one of them sort of grows this way, and one of them stays that way, and then that's the, like one of the big conflicts of the movie. Really fun. Because having someone that's very close, important in your life, best friend or girlfriend or whatever, and then thinking like, would we be friends if we met today, or would we, you know... And then if you think, no, we wouldn't because we're so drastically different, that sort of shakes your, shakes you a little bit. You're like, man, is this right? Is this like, am I, should I be friends with them? And like, what am I doing? Am I, the person's so different, blah, blah, blah. I hate to steal someone else's idea, but in, in my, in my opinion, when someone else sort of solves a problem for you, you just take that and then you credit them. So I'll credit the show New Girl <laughs> because they addressed this and it was, you know, it was a fun episode, whatever. The answer is, and this is very sort of important, would we be friends if we met today? Who cares? It doesn't matter. Do you know why? Because we are friends today. And that sort of puts it to bed. You know, you're sort of worrying about something that's so incredibly unimportant. Um, and worrying about something that shakes the relationship is just so, it's a, it's a lost cause. It's a, it's a fool's errand. It's a, you know, it's just dumb and you don't want to do dumb stuff. <laughs> so next time someone asks you, would you be friends if we met today? That's your answer. Who cares? doesn't matter. We are friends and that's what matters. Now let's get drunk. <laughs> Uh, again, I think I'm going to be putting this up on Saturday morning. Hopefully these are all going up Saturday mornings. Hope you had a great week. Can't wait for the weekend and, uh, keep banging. Mm -hmm.